poem, The Power of Music, Alexander's Feast of John Dryden, and Song in Honor of St. Cecilia's Day, 1697. Twas at the royal feast, what Persia won by Philip's warlike son. Uh -huh. Aloft in awful state, the godlike hero sate on his imperial throne. His valiant peers were placed around, their bow brows with roses and with myrtles bound. So should desert in arms be crowned, the lovely Thais by his side, sate with the blooming eastern bride, and flower of youth and beauty's pride. Uh -huh. Happy, happy, happy pair, none but the brave, none but the brave, none but the brave deserves the fair. Timotheus placed on high amid the tuneful choir, with flying fingers touched the lyre. <laughs> the trembling notes ascend to the sky and heavenly joys inspire. The song began from Jove, who left his blissful seats above. Such is the power of mighty love. The dragon's fury form belied the god. Sublime on radiant spires he rode, when he to fair Olympia pressed. And while he sought his snowy breast, then round her slender waist he curled and stamped an image of himself, a sovereign of the world, the listening crowd admire the lofty sound, a present deity, they shout around, a present deity, the vaulted roofs rebound with ravished ears, the monarch hears, assumes the god, affects to nod, and seems to shake the spheres. Uh -huh. The praise of Bacchus, then the sweet musician's song of Bacchus, rather fair and even young, Ever young, the jolly god in triumph comes, sound the trumpets, beat the drums, flushed with purple grace. He sounds his honest face, now gives the hot boys. Breath, he comes, he comes, Bacchus ever fair and young. Drinking joys did first ordain, Bacchus' blessings are a treasure, drinking is the soldier's pleasure. Rich the treasure, sweet the pleasure, sweet is pleasure after pain. Huh? Soothed with the sound, the king grew vain, fought all his battles over again, and thrice he routed all his foes, and thrice he slew the slain. The master saw the madness rise, his glowing cheeks, his ardent eyes, and while he heaven and earth defied, defied, changed his hand and checked his pride. He chose a mournful muse, saw saw pity to infuse he sung darius great and good by too severe a fate fallen 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 from his high estate and well turning in his blood deserted at his utmost need by those his former bounty fed on the bare earth exposed he lies with not a friend to close his eyes, with down and cast looks the joyless victor sate, revolving in his alternate, alternate fit soul, altered soul, the various turns of the chance below. And now and then a sigh he stole, and tears began to flow. The mighty master smiled to see that love was in the next degree. Twas but a kindred sound to move, for pity melts the mind to love. Softly sweet in Lydian measures, soon he soothed the soul to pleasures. War, he sung, is toil and trouble, honor but an empty bubble. Never ending, still beginning, fighting still and still destroying, if the world be worth thy winning. Think, oh, think, it worth enjoying, lovely Thais sits beside thee. Take the good the gods provide thee. The many rend the skies with loud applause, so love was crowned, but music won the cause. Uh -huh. hmm. Music won. <laughs> the prince, unable to conceal his pain, Gazed on the fair who caused his care, and sighed and looked and sighed and looked, 
sighed and looked and sighed again, at length with love and wine at once oppressed. The vanquished victor sunk upon her breast. Now strike the golden lyre again, a louder yet and yet a louder strain, break his hand, bands of sleep asunder, and rouse him like a rattling peal of thunder. <laughs> hark, hark, the harrow horrid sound has raised up his head and awakened from the dead and amazed he stares round revenge revenge to matthias cries see the furies arise see the snakes that they rear how they hiss in their hair and the sparkles that flash from their eyes behold a ghastly band each a touch in his hand those are grecian ghosts that in battle were slain and unburied remain, unglorious on the plain. Give the revengeance due to the valiant crew. Behold how they toss their torches on high, how they point to the Persian abodes and glittering temples of their hostile gods. Glittering temples. The princes applause with the furious joy, and the king seized a flambeau with the zeal to destroy. Thais led the way. To light him to his prey, and like another Helen fired another Troy. Thus long ago, ere heavenly heaving bellows learned to bow, blow, while organs yet were mute to Mertheus uh, to his breathing flute, and sounding lyre could swell the soul to rage, uh, our kindred soft desire. At last divine Cecilia came, inventress of the vocal frame, and the sweet enthusiast, uh, sweet enthusiast, from her sacred store, enlarged the former narrow bounds, and added length to solemn sounds with nature's mother's wit and arts unknown before. Let Artemotheus yield the prize, or both divide the crown. She raised a mortal to the sky. She drew an angel down. And a poem. <laughs> she drew an angel down. We're talking about Saint Cecilia. <laughs> More song for Saint Cecilia's Day. It's not the song for Saint Cecilia's Day. It's for the feast. It's for Saint Cecilia's Day, but it's actually Alexander's feast. Or the power of music. <laughs> A song in honor of St. Cecilia's Day, 1697. By John Dryden, leading poet. Hmm. The first official poet laureate of England. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we may have some time for some analysis from the untuning of the sky. Because we're talking about uh, music and English poetry. <laughs> Alexander's Feast, the drama of musical power. <laughs> if the opening and final of the first... Cecilia's day ode gave evidence of a sense of Dryden's part of a kind of musical programmatic dramaturgy, however. It is to the Alexander Feast, or the power of music, of ten years later that we must turn for the fulfillment of that promise. Uh, questions ranging from that of overall theme to those of more min minute details of arrangement and line and repetition of word raised by the musical setting of the first ode were settled quite definitely in the execution of the second one, Draga's setting of the closing line, for example, actually involved the singing of the music shall untune the sky. Untune, untune, and music shall, and music shall, and then there was the problem of adapting the rigorous and flexible strophic structure to the exegesis of the settings. Alternation, of course, and solo duet in the final 
crucial matter of theme and of the move from the expository to the dramatic. As a solution of all these problems, Alexander's feast must be considered as a true libretto rather than merely as another in the series of commendatory odes. It is almost proverbial now how Dryden found the prospect of writing another ode troublesome and in no way beneficial, and how its actual composition was accompanied with great concern and some nervousness. The original setting by Jerome, Jeremiah Clark was never published. No trace of it remains, so that we cannot know precisely the degree to which Dryden's efforts were successful in the case of some of the more technical matters um, hmm, which he faced as librettus, uh, but this uh, authority to which the ode celebrates its epic uh, dominant myth of music is unimpeachable and its brilliance as a poetic text. Uh -huh. It's brilliant, so uh -huh. nevertheless, it's brilliant. As a poetic text, completely apart from its musical setting, has always been dazzling. His search for a subject could not have taken him far. His dramatic libretto called for one of the old stories of effective music, Orpheus, Arion, rather than the more strictly political Ambion. The Sirens, uh, Ulysses, less likely candidates, uh, were the stories of the <clears throat> musical martyrs of some sort or another, Orpheus's. Dismemberment, Heraclitus' murder as teacher, Linus of the man's own liar, the punishment of Terpandor, or adding an extra string to the liar, and the ridicule of the historical Tamartius of Mytilides for his innovations along similar lines, Marcius and the evil appraisal of the hateful Alice Smith, Midas and the grossly ridiculed lack of taste. All of these must have seemed either overly grotesque or patently ridiculous. Even the story of St. Celia herself was too bad a canonical and familiar musical incident. Uh, the philo melamachia ending in death was not only unsuitable because of its tragic conclusion, but because such a subject would seem better adapted to the chamber dialogue than to the expansion of a cantata. We are reading a musical analysis of the poem oh, Alexander's Feast, uh, the power of music. We are looking for the power of music in the dazzling, beautiful poetry of the Poet Laureate, the first one of Poet Laureate of England, the first Poet Laureate, John Dryden in the unturning of the sky.